one of the most important and fascinating figures in religion that has just fascinated me for years. That is, the story around this one person <clears throat> is so big, so deep, so profound, that uh, it, just, it just amazes me how many people don't know all of the stories around the man we call Moses. Moses was supposedly the great lawgiver. Christianity, Judaism, and Islam recognizes Moses. Uh, and Moses was the great teacher. And, but people have no idea in the world what the real story of Moses really was. And it hasn't got anything to do with Judaism got nothing whatsoever to do with Islam or Christianity. First of all, if you do the research, which virtually nobody does, because we don't have time for that, but if you do any really legitimate academic research, you go to a, 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 a library, you go to a seminary library, and bring down about 14 of the reference books just on Moses and begin to read and study this man called Moses, you will first of all know and find out, if you just do the homework, you'll find out there was no Moses. Moses never lived. It's an idea. It's, a, you know, it's, it's like Superman. It's a wonderful story. But he never really lived. Uh, you know, when I, was, I was a kid. I loved Mickey Mouse. It doesn't really exist. It's just a story. When you're a little child. And so the story of Moses, the first thing you learn, if you really do the homework, is that Moses never lived. There was no such a man as Moses. And, uh, and then you find out, well, that's why the Bible is called the greatest story ever told. It's a story. And it's the greatest story ever told because it's the oldest story that's ever been told. And I used to get, I used to catch hell when my mother would hear me telling a story. Are you out telling a story? Implying, are you lying again? You telling the stories? Well, that's what the Bible's called, the greatest story ever told. It's not the greatest collection of historical facts ever assembled. It's the greatest story ever told. And once you have uh, taken a few years out of your life and start reading and studying theology, you begin to realize that Moses never lived, and yet there is an incredible one hell of a story behind this character called Moses. A lot of interesting stuff in relation to the worship around Moses. Uh, Moses was a, was a, first of all, Moses is not uh, a Hebrew name. It goes back to an Egyptian name, an Egyptian word, Moses. Uh, but when we, when we I, I, I'll give you, because there's so many places to start to talk about Moses. Uh, first of all, Moses uh, came down from the mountain, we're told, uh, with the Ten Commandments. Uh, the, well, if you go back to the Bible, the Old Testament, you will find that there was actually three, three, Count them. One, two, three. Three different, uh, uh, three different Ten Commandments. The first Ten Commandments, Moses comes down and sees the children of Israel worshiping a golden calf, and he becomes so angry, he takes the, the Ten Commandments that God has given him, and he throws them down on the ground, and they break. The plates break. Therefore, Moses now is the first lawbreaker. He broke the law. And so that's where we get the term. That you're a lawbreaker. You broke the law. That's what Moses did. He broke the law. And then, of course, the, he had to go back up, turn around and go back up again. And then God gave him a, a second set of the Ten Commandments. But those Ten Commandments are a little different than the first set. But that's okay. Nobody's going to know the difference because the first set was broken anyway. 
<clears throat> and then we find out that, no, actually, he gave them a third set of Ten Commandments. Well, how many people know that? And, and how important is it? Well, it's very important once you understand the symbolism and the codes and the encoded uh, uh, you know, story in the New Testament and in the Old. Uh, first of all, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about when I say that it's a fascinating story uh, of Moses, all the intricacies that you are not aware of. We, when we think of Moses coming down from the mountain, we think of, of uh, I do anyway, uh, Charlton Heston and the, and the movie The Bible uh, and the Ten Commandments, I think it was called. And Moses comes down with two, uh, you know, two big slabs upon which is written the Ten Commandments. Well, first of all, there wasn't Ten Commandments. The, the, what we call the Ten Commandments is based, if you go to encyclopedia and read, uh, go to reference books on Moses, you will see that the idea of Ten Commandments came from Egypt, not Jewish, not Hebrew, not Yahweh. It came from Egypt. But there wasn't Ten Commandments. There were twelve, and they weren't called Commandments. They're almost identical, but it's called the 12 Negative Confessions. Write that down and remember it. Look on the web or go to a library and read about the 12 Negative Confessions. The 12 Negative Confessions in Egypt basically said it's a negative confession. I will not do this to my fellow man. I will not steal from my fellow man. I will not bear false witness against my neighbor. These things I will not do. And so then they turn it around and say, the Ten Commandments is, thou shalt not uh, do this and that. That's exactly what the Egyptians said. But they said it in a different way. They said, I won't do it. I will not steal. I will not do this. I will not do that. And so it's called the Twelve Negative confession. And then a couple of the negative confessions was, I will not steal my, my, my brother's uh, horse or his animal, and I will not steal his wife. And so to make it Ten Commandments, and why is it Ten? T-E-N, Ten Commandments. There's a reason. And so you, <clears throat> you join uh, the, a couple of the twelve negative confessions, <clears throat> And now, you know, if you join four of them into two, now you've got the Ten Commandments. And so why is it called Ten? Because Ten, I, N, I, I and uh, the I and the O, which is the basis for uh, 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 today what we call um, digital. The digital is the number one and zero, ten. And it has to do with the worship of the God of the sun. And Egypt, in Egypt, <clears throat> the God of the sun was called the Aten. A-T-E-N. Aten. And so ten is the one and the O, or the I and the O of uh, digital. Uh, ten is the number ten Downing Street is where the Prime Minister of England lives. His address is number ten. Downing Street, and of course you have the Jewish God Yahweh, which is uh, <clears throat> the Aten, another way of spelling it, and the Aten was Aton, A-T-O-N, or A-T-E-N, look in the dictionary, you'll see it's the same thing, the Aten was the sun, and another way of spelling the A-T-E-N, the sun God, the Aten, was Aton, A-T-O-N, the Aton or Aten, okay, is a sun god. So in Hebrew, the, uh, the, uh, what we call the Jewish religion, God's chosen people, you find out it's all taken from the ancient Egyptian. And so the name of God is four letters. Uh, we, we're told that in Hebrew, the four letters are, uh, called the Tetragrammaton. Tetra meaning four, gramma meaning word. So tetra, grammaton. Tetra meaning four, gramma meaning words. 
and Aton, the sun, the tetragramma Aton, tetragrammaton. So the Aton or the tetragrammaton is the name of the holy name of God. No, it's a bunch of bull. Go back and do some homework and you'll find the Aton is an old ancient name of the Aten. And Moses brings down the Aten commandments. All of this is dark secrets that the Jews have played on the people. And they've even fooled themselves into believing this stuff. And so when the Hindus, and uh, that's, that's a whole different story, going back to trace the ancient religion back to the Hindu. But, uh, but the name of God, as I said in Hebrew, is Tetragramma Aton. Tetragramma Aton. And, the, and if you look in the reference books, you will see the, uh, in the uh, old Hebrew writings uh, that the uh, old Hebrew uh, 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 rabbis, they talked about the Tetragramma and the, the Aton being a sun god. And they, and a couple of the old rabbis during the Middle Ages wrote and, sh and, and drew uh, pictures of the Aton. Go back and look at it. It's on my website. Uh, if you go to Jordan Maxwell's show, not jordanmaxwell.com. No, jordanmaxwellshow.com. That's my website. And join the research society, and then all of the pictures and stuff I'm talking about is all there in full color. You'll see all of the stuff that you've been told that's just not true. But anyway, going back to the Aton or the Aten, uh, Moses comes down, and we've got, you know, like I said, we have a mental picture of Charlton Heston coming down with the Ten Commandments, these big plates, and he breaks the law. Well, the 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 Hebrew word for those plates was not the Ten Commandments. Uh, it was the Hebrew term for those plates that Moses supposedly brought down. They were called stones because they're written on stone. They were called stones of the testimony. And so uh, you know, Charlton Heston was bringing down these heavy stone tablets. <clears throat> uh, but and so they, we call them, the Christians call them the Ten Commandments. No, they were the stones of the testimony. And that's the Hebrew term for the Ten Commandments, stones of the testimony. Well, if you go back to the old Hebrew reference works and the Bible reference works, you will see that the stones of the testimony, or so supposedly the great stone tablets that Moses came down from the mountain with uh, you know, God gave him, the reference works say they were two small round stones that you could carry in one hand. Not slabs of, of not big slabs of stone like uh, Charlton Heston was carrying. No, the reference works, Bible encyclopedias and Bible dictionaries and reference works will tell you that they were called the stones of the testimony. Which is very interesting. Moses now comes down with a new law called the Stones of the Testimony. Why are they called Stones of the Testimony in Hebrew? Because it has to do with your testicles. That's where we get the word test. That men that get angry, we say they're getting testy. They're starting to show their manhood when they get testy. And so you're going to testify in a court. And your kid, you're going to write out and take a test in school. <clears throat> or if you're a Christian, you're going to give your testimonial. Test comes from testicle. So the, so the stones of the testimony were your, were your, were your, you know, the stones of the testimony are your testicles. This is why when the Jews go into court, they might still do it today, but they did it in the old times. When a one Jew brings another Jew into court before the Jewish court, uh, <clears throat> both of them, when, when, uh, when talking before the judge, 
they both had to both been had to hold their testicles as they testified with their testimony. And so they had to hold their testicles when they testified. Why? Because it's it's a symbol. If we catch you lying in this court against your Jewish brother, and we catch you doing something, one Jew against another Jew, you better understand what you're doing here. You're holding your testicles or the stones of your testimony. And so Moses comes down with the stones of the testimony. It's just a symbolic story that has sexual <clears throat> connotations. There were no just big uh, plates of stone. No, they were two small round stones, as what the encyclopedias and the reference works will tell you. So go back and look at this whole story of Moses all over again. There's a bigger story here yet. Now, that's just one of about ten fascinating things about Moses and the Ten Commandments you didn't know. The second thing I think is very interesting is that Moses represents a moon god. Moses represents a, a, a uh, lunar religion. There was no such a man as Moses. But the name Moses in the word Moses is connected in the ancient Arabic world, the ancient Egyptian world, to a worship of the moon. So Moses was a lunar name, a lunar religion. And so the ancient peoples of the Middle East, uh, if you stand in Egypt and look eastward, there's a huge mountain range in the middle of the Sinai Desert, very high mountains in the Sinai. And so <clears throat> from Egypt and the Sinai, that part of Egypt, uh, next to Egypt, looking eastward, Every night, about 6 o'clock, when the sun goes down and you're facing uh, facing east, seeing a large mountain range, from behind the mountains every night would come up the moon. And so the moon became known as, uh, as, as the god of the ancient uh, Arabic peoples. And so that's why today... Uh, Jewish holidays and Jewish holy days in the Sabbath, all the holy days are always after sundown. Always after sundown. After six o'clock are the holy days. As a matter of fact, uh, that's when days are counted. Monday through Sunday, days are counted from six o'clock in the evening to six o'clock in the next evening. Why? Because Judaism was following the moon uh, god, Moses. And Moses uh, was teaching the, the Hebrew people the, the, the lunar religion. And so that's why Jews celebrate their holy days after sundown, because that's when the moon comes out after 6 o'clock. So it's showing you it's a lunar moon-worshipping religion. And the Jews today will tell you that their calendar is referred to as a lunar calendar. And so the lunar calendar with the lunar uh, divinity named Moses, who's holding his testicles and testifying, all of this goes back to sex worship, moon worship. It's an extraordinary, deep and dark, hidden subject that I'm telling you it's about time you wake up and find out where this stuff has really come from. And then when you find out that Moses not only led the people in the moon worship of Allah or Yahweh, Yahweh or Allah is the same God. Yahweh is Hebrew, Phoenician Hebrew, or Allah is Arabic, Egyptian Arabic. So it's Arabic or Hebrew. In Arabic, the moon god was Allah. In, in Hebrew, it's Yahweh. Yahweh Allah is the same thing. It's all moon worship. 